Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Sports That Guru YouTube channel. I'm your host Klaus Glenning and today we are going to speak of a prince. No, not prince. A prince. Friedrich Karl, the prince of Prussia, earned a medal in the equestrianism in the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm. But as we, as we shall see, he eventually suffered a terrible fate. Friedrich Karl, or to be exact, Tassilo Wilhelm Humbert Leopold Friedrich Karl was born on the 6th of April 1893 at the castle of Klein Glinicke in Potsdam, close to Berlin. Like most modern noblemen of the times, he was a prolific rider, horse rider at an early age. It was part of the education of being royal. His parents were Prince Leopold of Prussia and Princess Louise Sophie of Schleswig Holstein Sonderburg Augustenburg. Long name. Friedrich Karl came from a long line of prolific Prussian rulers, including Frederick William I, the soldier king, and above all, Frederick the Great. He was given the rank of lieutenant at the tenor age of 10 at the guard troops. Germany have a strong tradition when it comes to equestrianism. In 1912, they were indeed the favourites in all disciplines, but surprisingly enough, did not win any gold. Here we see the German jumping team with the... Um, Friedrich Karl at the far left. Uh, Germany managed three silver and one bronze in the 1912 Olympics. And it is, it is here that Friedrich Karl enters into Olympic history after having just managed a tied 18th placed place in the individual jumping. Friedrich Karl was the fastest rider of all in the team jumping on his horse Gibson Boy. Perhaps this was too fast. As he got points deducted for failing certain obstacle, he got 166 out of a possible 190 points. His points total did not count officially in the German score, but an Olympic bronze medalist he nevertheless is, as he was part of the team. And we shall also remember that the prince was only 19 years of age at the time. Here we see uh, Friedrich Karl jumping in 1912. Friedrich, he was also uh, a prolific football player and a good runner, and he was trained by the American multiple Olympic medalist Al Kranzlein. What I have talked about so far is just one side of British Karl. Let's take a look at the other side. Two years after the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm, the horrific First World War broke out. The prince offered his service like millions of other men and quite a few women did. Our protagonist entered the German Air Force and in 1914 began his service. Military aviation during the First World War was not the formidable we weapon it later came to be. Even though bombing from airplanes did occur during the Great War, their main task was to observe and photograph enemy positions as well as shoot down the enemy, enemy's reconnaissance planes. They were vulnerable from the, from the fire from below as they were compared to later poorly built and had to fly rather low so a substantial number of pilots were shot down. That is what happened to Friedrich Karl. Friedrich Karl flew many missions and during the war received the Iron, first, uh, Iron Cross first and second classes respectively. See the picture here. But, but in late March of 1917, he flew a mission observing enemy positions near Langnicourt in northern France. There he was shot at from below and bullets hit the engine block and he had to make an emergency landing in no man's land. In the landing, he injured his foot, but initially managed to run away from the pursuing troops. However, as he was trying to reach his own lines, he was shot in the back by Australian servicemen patrolling the area. Who actually shot the prince is uncertain, as men from the 13th Light Horse Regiment, as well as the 26th Infantry Battalion, claim to have been responsible. The prince fell seriously, fell seriously injured into a trench and was carried off on a stretcher. Meanwhile, Australian troops captured his airplane. See the attached, attached picture. The prince had his wounds treated and seemed to recover rather well. However, after surgery, he suffered a serious secondary hemorrhage from the kidneys and was unable to recover. Prince Friedrich Karl died on April 6, 1917 at the English Military Hospital and at saint Etienne du rouvray and was buried nearby. That it was no ordinary funeral is shown by the fact that 100 men as well as several English officers followed the funeral procession. Funeral salutes were fired and two wreaths were put on the grave in honour of the fallen heir and sportsman. Both the Australians and the English 
later said that the prince had acted as a gentleman and was courteous and friendly during his captivity. This opinion was later uh, repeated in the Allied press. Before we conclude this episode, I would like to show you a page from the 26th Infantry Battalion's intelligence summary from March 22nd to March 20, 27th, 1917, where the capture of the prince, the prince is mentioned. Quite a story, eh? Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to the Sports Stats Guru YouTube channel so you won't miss any interesting stories from the world of sports. Thank you.